Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And first thing first, thank you all for your continuous support. I hope you all have been doing well. And if you are new to the channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button to get the updates on interesting cybersecurity and related topics. So in today's video, I've come up with yet another topic that is sure to pick your interest. And you must know about the ongoing Russia and Ukrainian conflict. But what you might not know in details is how there is also a cyber warfare going on, which can be as dangerous as the physical one. Without wasting much time, let us jump straight into our topic, Sandrome. Do you know what a sandworm really is? A sandworm is an insect usually found in deserts. It buries itself deep into the sand and refuses to come out. But while inside, it weakens the sand and can bring down heaps of sand dunes to the ground. So what is the connection between the sandworm and our video on cyber attacks? You may ask, right? And behind every successful act, there is a brain, or maybe a group of brain as in this case. Hacking psychology says that a successful hacker lies low but keeps on chipping away at the security layers unnoticed by all. Suddenly, you find yourself staring in the face of a massive cybersecurity breach that can cost you millions of dollars in damages. So Sandrom is apparently a group of six Russian hackers responsible for some of the most massive cyber attacks on installations globally. This group specialized in eroding the security layers of governmental organizations to steal critical information assets. The interesting part is that no one knows who they are and from where they operate. However, this group has carried out of the most destructive cyber attacks globally. So have you heard of the disruptive cyber attack that snuffed the lights out of the Ukrainian power grid in 2015-2016 and plunged various cities into complete darkness? If not, you may have heard of NotPetya, considered one of the most expensive cyber attacks in history. I've created a complete video on NotPetya, and if you are not aware of it, you can watch it uh, here. I either leave a link in, uh, on the screen or in the description. If not Petia was not enough, the 2017 French election sabotage attempts and the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games intrusion should bring back memories of the havoc that state-sponsored threat actors can unleash. So Sandrom is allegedly behind each of these attacks and many more. So let us see what makes Sandrom so special and why organizations globally should dread this group. First, let us put things in proper perspective by listing out the achievements of Sandrom. Sandrom is known by different names. It is officially known as Unit 74455, allegedly the Cyber Warfare Unit of the GRU, which is the Russian Foreign Military Intelligence Agency. And cybersecurity researchers have given other names to this unit, such as the Voodoo Bear, uh, telebots, Iron Viking, or team. And Sandrom allegedly consists of six individuals, all Russian nationalities, and resident of the Russian Federation. This is according to, to the US Department of Justice. Together, they qualify as part of the most elite and secretive cyber warfare group known as Sandrom. And here are some cyber attacks that have the typical stamp of authority that distinguishes Sandrom from the rest. The Ukrainian power grid attack, a series of cyber attacks on the Ukrainian power grids between December 2015 and December 2016, shut the lights out of various Ukrainian cities. The attacks including the malware like Killdisk, Black LNG, and Indestroyer. The French presidential election and Sandrom is associated with launching spear phishing campaigns and hack and leak strategies targeting local French government and French politicians, especially President Macron political party during the 2017 French elections. 
The not petty attack that I mentioned before and Sandworm assumed responsibility for the massive cyber attack on numerous public utility services like hospital, all health services, courier organizations, pharmaceutical, manufacturing, shipping companies, etc., etc., etc. So in June 2017, the total loss was estimated at more than $10 billion. In 2018, Pyeongchang Winter Olympics, Sandworm proved its versatility by launching spear phishing attacks targeting Olympic athletes and officials and South Korean citizens and other influential people during the Winter Olympics. These phishing attacks culminated in the launch of Olympic Destroyer, a destructive malware attack against the Olympic opening ceremony on February 9, 2018. This is by itself, by the way, very interesting story, maybe I will do a video about it as well. Disrupting investigation procedures and Sandworm revealed its state-sponsored connection when it launched spear phishing campaigns to disrupt the investigation procedures by the OPCW and DSTL into the nerve agent poisoning of Sergei Kripal and his daughter in April 2018, of course, allegedly. The Cyclops Blink botnet and Sandworm claims the credit for using vulnerability in WatchGuard Firebox devices to create the Cyclops Blink botnet. Fortunately, the US federal government disabled the Cyclops botnet before it could cause any damage. So you can notice that Sandworm specialized in different types of cyber attacks and did not restrict themselves to a specific operational mode. This is what makes the Sandworm special and different from the others. So some of Sandworm techniques, interesting points to ponder. And various books describing Sandworm techniques are available on the market. One such effort by Andy Greenberg recounts the chilling sequence of events that Sandworm unleashed on the global networking uh, communities. If you are interested in reading it, I have given link in the description below. It's a really recommended one and, and great book for the cyber uh, security uh, enthusiast and professional. And Sandworm doesn't directly attack individual computer networks networks or internet users. It focuses more on disrupting essential services like ATMs, healthcare organization, logistic providers, railways, transport services, and others. Thus, it affects individual users indirectly. Sandworm is more of a cyber warfare offensive that targets government than private sector and the military. Sandworm has proved wrong the pervasive myth that no one can hack a mainframe. It is shown to the world that the mainframe is vulnerable as any other server in the network system. So should the organization be worried about Sandworm? Definitely yes, they should be worried because Sandworm can infiltrate information system and steal critical data that can give business competitors significant edge over others. For example, a prominent pharma research company developed a vaccine for a dreaded disease that vaccine can save millions of lives globally. Imagine if someone hacked into the information network systems and stole the formula. They could sell the data to a competitor who could proceed to register the patent and rake in billions of dollars that do not legitimately belong to them. This is what Sandworm can do. This was obviously an hypothetical scenario, but you never know when a scenario may become a reality. So there is every reason for organizations to be worried about the hacking group. So why is Sandworm trending uh, now? And the surprising fact is that people know the exploit of Sandworm but do not know their whereabouts. And the US government is offering rewards of up to $10 million for information leading to the identification and the upper end of these six hackers who are the authority fields constitute the Sandworm. And U.S. Department has named these six hackers and sought information about them for the public. But are their names real? No one really uh, knows for sure because it's impossible to decipher the functioning uh, mode of their operation. Or 
it will take more time to do so. So have you ever heard of Achilles heel? And does syndrome have one? And if you know the Greek methodology, you must have heard of Achilles, known for being the most powerful Greek warrior in the Trojan War. The story is that Achilles' mother dipped him into the river Cytex to give him an unimaginable power. However, she held his heel while dipping him, thereby making his heel vulnerable. So Achilles' heel is a weakness that can be exploited to bring about anybody's downfall. So does syndrome have one? And maybe yes, otherwise how would the US Department of Justice expose so much information about this hacking group? So is syndrome still active? And it seems so, especially with the Russia-Ukrainian uh, war still going on, and reports indicate that launching of cyber attacks such as in Destroyer 2 attacks on Ukrainian energy uh, company. And Sandrom has the distinction of launching the first ever cyber attack on energy companies in 2014 and 2015 when they disrupt power lines in the Ukraine and cause a massive blackout that was first time the world knew one could disrupt power using cyber attacks. And the ongoing war witnessed similar attacks in Ukraine energy companies even in April 2022. However, the Slovakian cybersecurity firm ESET and the Ukrainian computer emergency response team detected the attack before it could trigger a blackout and cause damage. The attack involved using wiper software and code known as Caddy Wiper. The operational mode bears an uncanny resemblance to syndrome activities. So syndrome is very much alive and, and kicking. And can your country be the next target? Also maybe yes, the CISA, the FBI, the NSA advisory perceives the US as the next uh, target and even CISA issued an alert and warned that countries friendly with Ukraine can face repercussions from Russia indirectly through a cyber attack on their industry or energy installation. Similar happened only last week in the 5th of uh, September when another pro-Russian hacker group named Killnet attacked several enterprises in Japan. So what can you do to protect yourself from syndrome? And the best aspect of syndrome is that it doesn't require disk wiping tools to address the vulnerability. And here are some steps organizations can take to mitigate the syndrome threat. First and foremost, applying the Microsoft MS-14-060 patch closes the opening on which the vulnerability thrives. Awareness can always help deal with the syndrome attack. Securing the mainframe server is crucial because Sandrum specializes in accessing the information network system through the mainframe that is sometimes left unprotected by organizations. Identifying the booby-trapped file exploiting the vulnerability can prevent them from opening. Another solution is to block the call home traffic in known attacks that prevents retrieval of data and payload code even on unpatched computer systems. Let's wrap it up now. Cyber warfare can prove more dangerous than conventional or nuclear warfare. It allows you to bring the enemy nation to its knees without firing a single shot from your gun or shedding a single drop of blood. Advanced nations specialize in all types of warfare. It is proven experts in cyber warfare as they experience in dealing with its enemies accordingly. Syndrome is one such cyber warfare weapon that advanced nations can unleash on their political and ideological adversaries. The era of cyber warfare has just begun. As technology continues to evolve, it could get even worse than it is today. Thus, the only solution against this threat is for everyone, from organizations to the regular internet users, to follow the cybersecurity best practices to make their information assets bulletproof, or should I say, hackproof. This is it for uh, today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've created several videos of worldwide threat actors and hacker groups. Feel free to check them out. Take care, and I will see you in the next one.